Hi, this is Darlene from Digital Photo Mentor. Welcome to the seven day photo editing challenge. The goal this week is to get you experimenting and practicing with photo processing, even if you've never done it before. You can do this, I promise. Every day I'm going to share a new video tutorial and I'll demonstrate for you how I would process the image for that day. I'll give you some tips and techniques that you can try and practice and you're welcome to download the image that I will provide for you, a raw file, and process it any way you see fit. You can follow along and try and replicate what I did or you can do something completely different. This is all about experimenting and practicing and seeing what is possible. You never know, you might find that it's actually not as hard as you think and that maybe you even enjoy the process. If you're not already signed up, make sure you do that using the link below and that will give you access to download the raw file every day. And you'll also get an email reminding you when the new video is available. Please remember to share this with friends and anybody else that you think that might enjoy doing this and do it together. I mentioned software. In the videos, I'm going to be demonstrating the photo editing with Lightroom and Luminar because I use a combination of both in my workflow. If you're currently using something else, that's totally fine. Use whatever you're comfortable with. If you don't have a program that you are currently using, I would suggest that you download Luminar. There's a seven day free trial, so it fits really nicely in with the challenge. And then you can follow along with everything that I'm doing. By the end of the week, you may decide that you like it and you want to purchase it. And if it's not for you, that's totally fine too. So however you want to proceed, make sure you're signed up, get the raw file for today, and let's get started on this one, which is all about street photography. All right, so here I am inside of Luminar 4, which is brand new, um, just released. So if you haven't already got a copy, um, go below the video and you can get the download link and do the trial if you haven't already purchased it or decided to purchase it. This is a perfect opportunity, like I said, to try it out. And you'll be able to follow along with everything that I'm doing, even if you're using another software. Okay, so by all means, you know, use what you're comfortable with. But remember, this week is about getting outside of your comfort zone and trying some new things. So do download it and follow along if you can. All right, so today's image is all about street photography. And this one was shot in Havana, Cuba, which is great for doing street photography. Okay, so... This is the finished version of what I did earlier and I want to just show you how we're going to get from the before to the after. Okay, so this is what the image looks like before. And so that's the original raw file. Okay, that's what it looks like after I finished my editing. So what I'm going to do is basically undo my edits. Okay, and I'm just clicking this little history button here and I'm going to go back to the original and you'll see that it just resets everything. Okay, so what I'm doing is basically deleting all this history and I'm going to make a new history. So I'm going to start over. Okay, so the first thing that I want to show you is that Luminar has steps to follow. Okay, they may not look like steps and they may not be... Um, he highlighted as step one, step two, step three, but if you follow along from the top to the bottom, it makes it really easy to do so, okay? So if you've used a program like uh, Photoshop or even Lightroom or anything else to that for that, for that matter, um, it's kind of hard to know sometimes where to begin and what to do first. So if you follow from these little icons on the right here, you'll see that the first one is Essentials, then it goes to Creative, then it goes to Portrait, and finally professional. So those would be like the extra edits, okay? So if we start with the first one, which is essentials, then you get a set of filters that you can apply. Okay? If you go to creative, you'll see that the filters, I'll just close that one, are different, okay? So we go to essentials and it gives you a set of filters. Again, starting from top to bottom. So if you go to the first one and click it, it will open up. So just like that, okay? Click it to open, click it to close it, okay? So the first one is light and in photography, light is everything and light is the most important thing. So why not start there? Okay. So light obviously is going to imply the brightness and so on of the image. So this is where you're going to affect uh, things like exposure, uh, just the white sliders, right? 
And what I suggest to do is to play around and see what each of them do. You could read, you know, information about Luminar and tutorials or photo editing in general. I've got some good ones on raw processing as well. Okay, but basically what I suggest is play with the sliders and just see what they do. You know, drag them to extremes, drag them all the way if you want to, just to see what that one does and then decide where you want to be in the middle. Okay, because nobody ever sort of made a, something really creative just by adjusting by, you know, 1%, 1%, 1%. Go all in, go 100% and then decide that you want to be at 30. Okay, because it's much easier to do that than to at, keep adding a 1, 1, 1. Okay, so go, go a little extreme and then come back somewhere in the middle. Okay, so I've opened the advanced settings at the bottom of this filter here as well. It just gives you more options and something called a curve. Okay, you don't even have to get into playing with that if, if it's too complicated. You can leave that closed. I'm going to adjust the white slider and I'm going to show you a little trick. Okay, so if you're already familiar with editing, if you hold down the Alt, Alt Option key on your keyboard, and then click the slider, what it's going to do is it will show you areas of the image that are clipped. So you see these sort of little highlighted areas there. It looks like her uh, watch band and maybe the plastic bag in the corner. What this means is that those areas are clipped and that means they have no detail, okay? So normally I'm gonna pull this to the right and get some clipping areas and then bring it back until I don't have any clipping. But I think I've gone too far with the exposure, so I'm gonna come back a little bit with that first. Okay. Then I'm gonna do this with a white slider, okay? So I'm gonna make sure I go all the way up till I start to see some clipping, and then just pull it back to the left. Okay, so to the right is plus, to the left is minus, okay? or opposite if you're looking at me backwards, okay? So to the right is plus, to the left is minus, okay? So let's just see what this is doing just by sliding the exposures and the white, the exposure and the white sliders up a little bit, okay? So it's gone from sort of dark and dingy to nice and bright, okay? With two sliders. Next thing I'm gonna do is go to the next filter. I think the white balance is not too bad here. I could warm it up a little bit, okay? Um, so the temperature is, you can see, it visually shows you. If you go to the left, it's gonna be more blue. If you go to the right, it's gonna be more yellow. Okay, so yellow, blue. Okay, so you get to decide where you want your color, your image to be on the color scale, okay? I don't wanna warm it up too much because then it's gonna overpower the, the blue wall and get rid of the blue wall. So I'm gonna go to the next filter. So the next one, when I click it, closes the light and opens the next one called AI Enhance. So AI is artificial intelligence. So they've built in a lot of things into Luminar that are running in the background, some fancy algorithms, lots of math, to figure out how to apply these things for you magically, okay? And at first I was sort of against the AI and I have to say that it's been so well done that I'm, I'm quite impressed. So Accent AI, if I'm gonna drag this one all the way to the right, okay, so see what it's doing? It's giving us a little bit more contrast, it's increasing the saturation, which is the color intensity. So it's doing a lot of really nice things without going overboard on the people as well. Because often if you increase the saturation, you'll end up with people that look kind of orangey and they glow a little bit. So I kind of like what it's doing there and it's bringing out, look at the blue in the wall that it's bringing out. So I'm gonna put that up to about 60% or so, okay? Sky Enhancer, you'll notice that it's grayed out and I actually can't click on it because it's not recognizing a sky in this picture. So if this was a landscape, you'd be able to play with that slider. Okay, That's how smart the program is. It knows there's no sky here. Okay, the next one down is AI Structure. So it's going to be similar to Clarity if you've cl used Clarity in other programs. Okay, so again, I want to go all the way to the right and all the way to the left and just see what it does. So notice all the way to the left, it almost looks like it's sort of starting to become soft focus or blurry and it's eliminated a lot of the details in that wall that I want. So I know that I wanna to go to the plus side, but how much do I wanna to go to the plus side? Do I wanna go all the way or maybe somewhere in the middle, okay? Something to keep in mind as you're editing, okay? So remember I said you wanna go all the way to try it out and see what it looks like, but generally you don't wanna stay there. You wanna do your, your photo editing so that it is an enhancement of an already good picture, not a fix of a bad picture to start with. 
Okay, so I hope that you like this image and that you consider it a good picture. So you want to make sure that your edits are subtle and that the image sort of looks still natural looking to the eyes and it doesn't, um, it doesn't look overdone. Okay, so overdone is really hard to sort of define, but if you're going past sort of the realm of, of what looks normal or what looks natural, then you're getting into overdone. Okay, so just be careful of not going too far and going to the extreme on everything. The next filter down is the color one. Okay, so I've already opened advanced settings again. So if you're just doing the basic settings, the remove color cast slider is really handy. So if you've got an image that's off color and you're just having trouble uh, correcting it, try this one, okay? So let's see what it does if we go all the way again, okay? And it's actually, look what it's doing. It's warming up the skin tones and making them nice and warmer, but it's not affecting the wall so much. So I wanna kinda go in the middle and give them some nicer skin tones without getting rid of, of the blue of the wall because I love that intense blue. Okay, Something else that you can do is check your image for before and after quite often. So I'm pressing the backslash on the keyboard to see before and after. Okay, Another way that you can do before and after is toggle this little slider up here. I'm just clicking. There's the eyeball and this little slider and it allows you to just see your image um, anywhere before and after and you can actually edit in this mode as well so you can sort of see it happen live or real time I prefer to see the whole image so I just turn it off and on with the backslash key okay the other the thing that you can do because that's going all the way back to the original is you can just do um, one filter so you can turn it off and on and it looks like a little light switch here there's a little toggle um, right by the corner of the filter okay so if you click there it will turn off that particular filter and you'll get to see just what it's doing okay so look at the skin tones again they look sort of more bluish versus when I turn it on, right? You can see it's really affecting the people and the concrete more than it is the wall, right? So that's a handy one. The next thing that I'm gonna do is open the advanced settings. If you wanna take it a little bit farther, right? You can go and adjust each individual color, right? So skin tones are generally in the orange category. So if you want, you can see what that does. So again, that's what normally happens when you increase saturation. You get sort of these orange fake tan looking people and I don't want to do that to these lovely folks. Okay? But you can also just brighten the skin tone. So if you want to lighten them a little bit and lighten their faces without getting into detailed, you know, dodging and burning and, and local controls, which is um, painting things in, you can just affect one color. Okay, so see what happens when I just affect the oranges. I can do the same with blue. So if I want to darken the blues, I can do that or brighten the blues. I can do that as well. Or I might want to have more saturation in the blue, but not in the people. Right? We could also remove the blue completely. So the flexibility here is is absolutely limitless to your own mind. Right? You can you're limited by your own creativity. So I'm happy with that. I'm kind of editing this image based on a, an idea I have in my head of what it should look like or what I'd like to have it look like. And for me, that because it's a um, Havana in Cuba and it feels sort of um, I don't want to say dirty, but like crunchy, like the, the concrete there is crumbling. There's a lot of, of crumbling buildings and concrete. So I wanted to have that sort of feel um, without going too over the top. Okay? So I'm not going to do a black and white conversion yet. I'm going to do that in a different way and I'll show you that in a minute. But if you want, you could apply a black and white conversion here. Okay. If you don't want to use any of the filters, just skip over it. Okay. So just not using black and white, go to the next one. So I'm still following down top to bottom. Okay. The next one, Detail Enhancer is one of my favorite filters in Luminar. Okay, so what this does is it allows you to isolate how much detail is shown in the small, medium, and large detail uh, of the image. Okay, so small details, I'm just gonna zoom in a little bit here so you can sort of see a little bit better. 
Okay, so again, I'm gonna take it all the way to 100. So small details will give it sort of this really, really crunchy look. Like you can actually start to see people's pores and it enhances the noise or grain in the image. And I tend to keep that one sort of very subtle. Like I tend to keep this one under 10. Okay, so I want to enhance um, things that would include things like hair or fur if you have a lot of that in your picture. Okay. Medium details is going to be the average parts of your image. So if I pull that one all the way up to 100, look at how it looks different than the one with the small details. Okay? So I'm going to go about 30 on this one. So I like this one. And large details applies to areas um, that are sort of smooth I should say so like this lady's pants or sky area or skin even as well okay so large details if I increase that you start to see it's sort of more overall like a clarity if I go minus you start to see those areas become softer so I actually go to the minus side often about minus 10 and that keeps things like skin tone and sky from looking too overdone and getting things like halos a halo is where you have a dark area and a light area and there's like this sort of gradation in between that looks fake like a halo right i don't know how else to describe it so it's an area of blending that's not blending very well okay so i'm going to sharpen a little bit right once again, there's advanced settings, okay? So you can go down into the advanced settings and control it even farther, or you can just say, stop there, okay? I'm gonna stop there. Denoise is for removing noise in the picture, and I'm not actually gonna do any because I wanna add grain in this picture because I want it sort of crunchy. So I'm not going to remove any noise, but you might choose to do so. Landscape enhancer is obviously for landscape type pictures, of which this is not. So let's fit that on the screen. So things like foliage enhancer and golden hour are great for a sunset landscape picture, which you'll get in a few days. Okay, so you could try this filter on a different image. This one, not so much. Right? The last one in this set is the vignette. So a vignette is something that applies to the edge of the image going into the center, and you can actually even darken or lighten. Okay, a, a dark vignette generally helps the viewer's eye get drawn into the center of the image more. So if you look at this image in particular, you'll see that the sidewalk um, is about the same sort of tone as their skin tone and the, and the lady's pants in the middle. And I wanna make sure that the edges of the image are not taking attention away from the people, okay? So a couple of tips for you in applying a vignette. The first thing that I recommend is you drag it again fairly dark so go as far to the left um, as you want to be able to see it so you can see that what that's doing okay now you might be happy with that and we can say okay perfect done and luminar does a great job of fading it in it looks pretty natural okay i'm going to take it a step farther though and actually position it okay so something that luminar does that lightroom does not is it allows you to move the vignette around from out of the center of the image Okay. So what I've done here is I've taken the feather slider down to minus 100 and what that does is it shows you a stronger or a quicker uh, change from the light to the dark so you can actually see where the vignette's going to apply. So I do that on purpose, drag it all the way down to the left so I can see where it is. Then you can change the shape and the size using the roundness slider, which is this one, so I can make it more of a circle or more of a square, okay? In this case, I think I want more of a square, but I wanna bring it in smaller. So I'm gonna decrease the size. Okay, now you see what's happening is the vignette is centered to the middle of the image, but the people are not centered within the vignette, which is what I want, would rather have. Okay, so this is where Luminar allows you to reposition the vignette. So there's a button here called Choose Subject. So by clicking on this, it gives me like this little crosshairs thing. I don't know if you can see that, okay? When I put it over the image. So anywhere that I click, I'm just gonna do a weird one so you can see what it's doing, okay? Wherever I click, that now becomes the center of the vignette, okay? So obviously that's not gonna work. So I just click choose subject again, and I'm gonna take a guess that it's gonna be somewhere around here. Okay, now that's not too bad. If I want a little bit less sidewalk, I wanna go a little bit higher. So I noticed that I was sort of like in her armpit there. So I'm gonna go just a little bit higher up to her shoulder and see what I got. 
Okay, so that looks pretty good. Now to undo what I've done here and put it back to something that's more natural looking, remember you don't want your edits to show. You don't want people to look at your image and go, wow, great editing. You want them to look at your image and say, wow, great image, right? So I'm going to go back to Feather and set it to zero where it started. And the simplest way to do that is to just double click the little slider, right? Boom, just like that. Right now I'm going to dial back the amount just a bit so it's not quite so dark. Somewhere about there, okay? I find that Luminar does a really nice job and it actually looks a lot more natural and fades really well as opposed to Lightroom's vignette. If you want to do an off-center vignette in Lightroom, you need to use the radio filter. So keep that in mind, okay? I can also actually lighten the inside of the image if I want, but I'm kind of happy with, I'm kind of happy with that. Okay, so now we've come to the bottom, we've come to the last filter in the Essentials panel. Okay, so if I wanted, I could continue editing under the Creative panel, but I'm gonna leave those for now and come back to those in another day. We're gonna do some textures on a future image in the challenge. And the same with Portrait, because even though there's people in this image, uh, Portrait is more designed for like when you have a larger face, and I'll give you an image to work on for Portrait um, tomorrow, actually. So I am going to do one on the professional category, okay? And I happen to have it open because I already did it once, okay? So the adjustable gradient is the one that I'm going to use here, okay? So you can go through each of these and see what they do and if you want to apply any of these, okay? Split toning is another one that's kind of cool. I'll show you that as well. So I'll show you these two. So adjustable gradient works just like a filter that you would drop in front of your lens when you're doing um, landscape to darken the sky. It's called a graduated neutral density filter. Same kind of thing. Okay, so the adjustable gradient though, um, doing it this way allows you to actually do something different on the top of the image than on the bottom. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is I actually do want to darken the bottom of this picture. I want the sidewalk to be not so bright and their feet to take less uh, notice than their faces. So I want to apply a darkening to the bottom. Okay, so I'm going to lower my exposure again. So remember, take it to extreme so you can see where it is and I'm going to adjust where it's positioned now. Okay, so now you could see that it's really dark, but it's going from the middle of the image. So if you click this button called Set Orientation, okay, it comes up with this little lines tool and you can drag it up and down to position it. Okay, so you can see how it's changing what's affecting based on where I position it. And you can also increase the feather, okay, or the spread as to how soft the edge is. Okay, so the smaller it is, the more obvious the edge, the wider, the more that it's gonna fade more gradually. Okay, so I want something about like that. Okay, you can also grab um, the middle one. Don't do it at the right center here by the dot. Go to the edge and you'll see this little uh, arrow key, this little curved arrow thing show up. If you click there and hold it, it will actually allow you to tilt it. Okay, so it doesn't have to be perfectly straight across. So I'm going to try and match the slope of the sidewalk there. So that's pretty close. Now I wanted the darkening to come onto their feet a little bit so you can see that it's gonna start here and end there, okay? And I'm gonna come up a little bit more like that. All right, so I don't want their legs to be so dark. And when I'm happy with that, then I just say done. Okay, so now I've got it positioned where I want. If I decide that it's too dark, I can scale it back. And maybe I also want to bring the highlights down a little bit. And that's actually doing a pretty nice job. Okay, so that is the bottom gradient. I still have the option of adjusting the top gradient. So if I wanna do something different on the top, I could increase exposure or contrast any of the sliders here, okay? So let's say I want to give it a little bit more contrast. So like we did with the other sliders, I'm gonna go to extreme. And if you click anywhere sort of along the scale, it will just pop the slider there. Okay, so see what happens? That's giving me a lot more contrast on the top of the image now than the bottom. And that's a little bit too much, so drag it back into the middle. Let's go somewhere about there. Okay, so I'm increasing the a contrast on the top part of the image above their feet and I'm darkening the sidewalk and their feet. So if I want to see what that's doing, remember we've got the little uh, light switch, the little toggle here, so I'm just going to turn it off. You can see that the sidewalk is now brighter again. See what that's doing? 
and it's giving me a little bit of contrast. So I decide I'm going to scale that back a little bit more. Remember, less is more. Okay, so keep it subtle. Less is more. The last one I'm going to show you um, in the filter range is split toning. Okay, split toning allows you to give a different color to the shadows than to the highlights. And I use it a lot. You can use it to make a sepia, like a black and white um, brown tone. But I use it a lot to add sort of like a brown antique look to color pictures. So remember I said I wanted to make this one look sort of old and grungy. So I'm gonna add like an orange hue to the shadows, okay? So this is my own little trick. You can pick up on this. So I'm gonna set the hue first somewhere in the orange range. And to pick the color, I'm going to turn the saturation up quite high. So now I can see what color it's using. And I can decide, do I want more orange or red or do I want more yellow? Somewhere in the yellow, yellow range, about like that. Okay, so obviously I don't want that much saturation. I just want it to be subtle so that the shadows aren't super blue, that they have sort of a more antique look. So let's go about 20 and see how that looks. Okay, so can you see what that's doing? It's just giving it a little bit of warmth in the shadows without affecting the wall too much. And notice that their faces have quite a bit of shadow as well, so it's actually warming up their face. So let me toggle that off. Okay, so see how blue that is, especially look at the faces. Turn it back on. It's really affecting the shadows, especially on the face. So I like what that is doing a lot. Okay. And if you decide that you don't want to apply that, you can undo the sliders and set them to zero or just toggle it off and leave it and you're done. Okay, so those are the things that I'm going to apply. Now something else I'll mention here inside Luminar is you'll see that the ones that have something um, done to them are white and the others are grayed out. So you can see which filters have been used and which ones haven't been used, okay? So the next thing I'm going to do is apply a look. Okay, now I'm going to do it the wrong way for you first and show you what not to do and then I'll show you what to do so that you can get back to this point if you make a mistake. Okay, because what happens is, okay, so a look, first of all, let's talk about what is a look. A look is like a preset in Lightroom. Okay, so it's, it's a filter or a set of things that are applying to the image to give it a particular style. Okay, so in Lightroom, again, that would be a preset. If you're working in Photoshop, that would be an action, okay? So Luminar comes with a number of different looks and you can get some more from their website. You can download, there's several that are free sets and additional ones that you have to purchase. Okay, so I've chosen um, the ones called Tonality Street Presets because it's a street photo and I knew that I wanted to add some grunge and I thought I would get some from this set and I was right. So there's several in here. You'll see that the thumbnails at the bottom, now that I've applied, I've chosen this um, look set, is you can see the th thumbnails of what this would look like if I just clicked on it, applied it to this image. So I'm gonna choose one called Grainy Film and once I click on it, it applies a different set of of adjustments than what I just did. Okay, now you'll notice that everything over here just changed, okay? So what it did was it overwrote the changes that I just made to the image. So I actually don't wanna do that. So that's the wrong way to do a look. Okay, so I'm gonna do undo, and you can do that by clicking on your keyboard, Command Z or Z if you're in the US, okay? And it will go back a step. Or I'll just go and apply it again just to show you the other way to do it. So when I started, you remember that I undid and went back to the original? And that's by using the history. Okay, so the history, now that I've done a bunch of things to this image, this little watch, little stopwatch in the bottom right is how you access the history. And this shows everything that I've done to this image all the way back to the beginning. So you can see I've done a lot. Okay, so I can go back to any step along the way here and start from there again. So what I want to do is I just want to go back the one step before I activated the look and you'll see that it grays out that step. Anything that's after the one that I clicked on is now grayed out. So if I start editing again from here, i will be making a new history and overwriting those grayed out ones. Okay, So I'm back where I, I want to be with the sort of quote, you know, finished image or partially finished image. And now I'm going to show you the right way to apply a new look. Okay. So 
Luminar has something that Lightroom does not, and that is called layers. Layers are done in programs like Photoshop, Elements, GIMP has layers, I believe On One has layers, among others. Lightroom does not. So things that you can do with layers are things like adding a texture overlay, adding some text, making a double exposure, things like that. Okay, some of which those we're going to do this week. Okay, layers tend to be complicated though in face and in Photoshop and difficult to understand. You have to understand how they're applying to each other, things like blend modes and masking, and it gets really complicated and it can be very confusing. Okay, so with Luminar, you notice that I just click this little icon in the upper right and it's called layers and it looks like a bunch of sheets of paper stacked together. So it shows me right now I have one layer and the layer is the just the file name. Okay, so that's the original raw file. And all of the changes that I've done to it, again, in the side panel, are applied to that layer, to this layer, current one. So I'm actually going to make a new layer and apply the look there. Okay? And how you do that is you just click this little plus right here. Okay? So when you hover over it, it says create new layer. Okay? So I click it, and what you want to choose is a new adjustment layer. Okay? So new adjustment layer. Now I'm going to do the same thing. So I'm going to click that grainy film again. Let's just see if that's the one I want. So I played with a few of these um, before we got started and I decided that the grainy film was the one that I liked the most. Uh, Grunge 1 and 2 were pretty good but they lacked contrast and I wasn't as happy with those. Uh, so I'm going to go with grainy film. And once I click on it, it's going to apply it. Again, it takes a second. And now you see it looks exactly the same as it did a minute ago, but the difference is that if I dial this one back to zero, so it's kind of like lowering the opacity so that the stuff that's below it, see, can you could see through it, okay? So imagine those layered papers, one on top of the other. Imagine one of those papers was slightly see-through. You'd be able to see what's below, okay? So that's what changing the amount does. It's like seeing through to the bottom, okay? So the closer I go to zero, you see that it goes back to the image that I have underneath, not the original unedited file, which is what was happening before. Okay. So if you want to keep all those edits intact, that's called non-destructive editing. So I've added the new layer and now I'm playing around with this look on top of it. Okay. So it's applying a set of things in here, just like I did before. Okay. So I can look at what it's doing. It's doing light, AI enhance, black and white, uh, among other things. Okay. If I like what it's doing, I can just stop there and say I'm done, but I want to dial it back a little bit because I envision having some color in this image, but not full color. Okay, so I want to dial it back to maybe about 50%. Okay, so this is totally personal and this is again fitting in with my idea of what I wanted to do with this image to begin with. Um, so I'm going to leave it there, but you might decide you want more or less color, or you might pick a totally different look or preset, right? The, the possibilities are, are endless and the, limited only by your imagination and what you can come up with, okay? And it's all about playing around, okay? Now, because I'm on another layer, um, it's showing me what has been applied. You can actually go and adjust any of them, okay? So if I want to say, okay, I don't like the texture overlay that it's doing, or maybe I want more or less film grain, or I want bigger film grain, I'll just change the size of the film grain so you can see what, it, what that does. Um, let's go with that. Okay, so if I want to see the total before and after, I just have to hold the backslash key or toggle the little slider. Now you can see that I've done quite a bit of change to this image, right? And it's looking pretty much like I want to call it done, except for one other thing, okay? I could go in and adjust the, the light here if I think it's a little bit too bright, uh, or I could in, increase the vignette. You can add to anything that's been applied here. So all the look is done is it's done a um, it's chosen some settings for you, okay? But all of those are fully adjustable after the fact, okay? You can also choose to dial the layer opacity down and that will just cause you to go back to the image underneath. Okay? So if you go back to zero, you see what's underneath 100%, you're seeing 100% of that layer. Okay? 
So the one more thing that I mentioned that I want to do, and that is to fix this little bit of garbage that's down in this bottom right hand corner. So there's a couple of things I could clone it out, um, but I'm just going to make it easy on myself and I'm going to crop it. Okay. So there's another tool up here called canvas. It looks like a little pencil and a ruler. So if you click that, you get into the cropping and the cloning and healing tools. So inside Luminar, the healing tool is called erase and it's for getting rid of stuff. Okay. So if you think of that, okay. So I'm just going to crop. And once the cropping dialog opens, like here, I have a choice of, there's a little lock toggle there, of leaving the aspect ratio, so the proportions or the shape, locked as it is. So when I, I size it down, it crops proportionately. Or I can unlock it and crop however I see fit. Right? So I can come in from one side or both sides. So I could crop in from this side or I could just come in a little bit from the bottom, which is what I prefer. So I want to keep the space. I kind of actually like them centered in here because it feels like um, the flag. Like if you look at the Cuban flag, it's got the stripes. Um, so I like the fact that they're sort of centered. It feels like, like a flag. That's just me <laughs> making up stuff. Okay, so again, it's totally up to you and it's totally artistic license. So once you're happy with the crop, you just hit done and it accepts it. So I find that a lot of the tools inside of Luminar are really intuitive and they're named in a way that makes sense and they're understandable. And if you follow along, you know, on the right, top to bottom, as I did, you can't go wrong. Okay. Just remember if you want to apply a look, do a plus layer, do a new adjustment layer and apply it to the look. Because if I decide that I don't like this one, I can actually just delete the layer or I can pick a different look and it'll start all over on top of this layer. Okay. Or I can just turn it off and on. So totally flexible. Now when I'm done with it, make sure that you save your image. Okay. So to do that, there's a little button here at the top. Okay. I'm just going to click it. So you're going to export to image and I'm just going to show you this quickly so that you can save it for today under the challenge. That's what we're doing. Okay. So ideally, if you're going to be sharing on Facebook, I recommend saving them to the long side, set the dimensions on the long side to 2048 pixels. Okay. I recommend just choose the sRGB color space. That's the best one to use for online and choose a JPEG. Okay. Leave the quality at hundred percent because Facebook tends to kind of crunch things anyways. So you don't want to crunch it anymore. You can add a little bit of sharpening if you want here. So Luminar will add a little bit of extra sharpening um, when you, it saves the file. Okay. So I'm going to save this one and then I will be ready to share it. So that's what you need to do. Save the image, come to the Facebook page. The link for sharing is below for today's challenge day and then get ready for tomorrow's which will be a brand new image and a brand new uh, technique so until then keep practicing and I hope you have fun with this image and we'll see you tomorrow